when everything comes together like this. It's truly amazing. So here all alone, two o'clock in the morning, taking some pictures of blue water. I'm Taylor Jackson and welcome to Photo Stopover. 24 hours or less in a location and the challenge to get three incredible photos worth framing. Come with me to experience all the success and failure along the way. I've made a terrible mistake for the giveaway on Patreon. I asked people to comment with their favorite pizza toppings. So now every few minutes I get a message on my phone with pizza toppings and I'm kind of hungry. It's an interesting van. It had a snorkel. I have some other information as well. Allow me to read that to you. I've spent so long obsessing over what gear to bring on this trip. I'll be talking more about that over the next few days. Basically, I put together the cheapest trip possible based on my airline, hotel, and Expedia points. The only thing that I had to pay for was my Airbnb in Rome and airport parking in Toronto. This trip is so short because it's summer and I just finished doing 11 weddings in June because it had five weekends. I had a cancellation July 5th, so I actually have this coming Saturday off. I'd never schedule such a big return flight one day before the wedding, and you shouldn't either. That means even if I had a wedding on Saturday, I wouldn't fly home on the Friday from Rome to Toronto to try to do that wedding. This trip is what I keep preaching to everyone uh, to take full control of your portfolio and sorry and make the one that you actually want spend money to make it happen even or use your Expedia points um, that way you get to skip all the growing years of running a photography business and you get right to the good part shooting the photos that you want for the couples that book you based on this portfolio Right? There, there isn't even words on the screen. I was acting. I was acting reading. It's a very challenging thing to do. It was a very dry open. I hope that you've made it this far because there's a pretty good chance that I would have turned this video off by now. But if you're here still, let's, uh, let's go do some things. Welcome to sunny Iceland. First stop, hot dog. Welcome to your guided tour of Iceland in Reykjavik. If you look out to your left, you'll see a man about to fall into the street. And here it is again. I'm not really sure who made this place famous. It might have been Anthony Bourdain. It might have been Drake. All I know is that the name translates to the best hot dog in town. Just go get a hot dog if you're here. Uh, they are better than any hot dog in the world. They're actually quality ingredients and they taste amazing. Can I do two hot dogs? Yeah. Everything. What is everything? Crispy onion, raw onion, ketchup, mustard, and mayo. All right. Okay. That sounds great. Here you go. Thank you very much. Thanks. This is why you come to Iceland. Here's a five second clip of me eating a hot dog to construction noise. I like Reykjavik. You can get a hot dog 10 in the morning and you can find street parking. I was so nervous to rent my first car in Iceland and looking back, had I just gone on a tour and stayed in Reykjavik, it would not have been nearly as much fun as it was to just drive a car and drive around. It's exactly like driving at home, uh, no big deal at all. I'm not really sure what this is, but I feel like it's some sort of Wes Anderson film set. Next up, the ultra touristy Blue Lagoon. Welcome to Blue Lagoon. Nothing like having a bath, a thousand strangers. Here we have what they would call an Instagram bridge. We can stand on the bridge, or you can be under the bridge. This episode is sponsored by Gatorade. Cool blue, Blue Lagoon. Gatorade, it's got what Blue Lagooners crave. 
And that's enough of that. Let's go take some photos. We're now at the part of the day where time just kind of stands still. It is seven o'clock and the sun is right there. It'll come a little bit lower, but I don't think it really ever goes too far beyond the horizon. Um, golden hour begins at 10 o'clock and goes until midnight. So I get two hours of golden hour, which is amazing. But then golden hour starts again at midnight. So there is no stoppage of time for golden hour and goes until five in the morning. So I'm happy I had that half hour nap. Uh, hopefully that'll keep me going because it looks like golden hour, at least according to this, is a 67% chance of being good and then also starts at 10.05 p.m. and goes until five in the morning. So that is what, seven hours of golden hour? Um, very, very interesting uh, place to be in the world, I guess, uh, this time of the year. So if you want to photograph in the infinite golden hour, uh, come to Iceland in the longest days of the year and, uh, and you get your wish. You get to live in golden hour forever. That app is called Alpen Glow and it helps me just kind of figure out when I should actually go outside. You can also set it to alert you when golden hour is happening, when blue hour is happening, whatever is interesting to you. Uh, we're going for a bit of a drive, about a two hour drive from the Blue Lagoon area. If I was here for a few more days, probably would have went down to the Glacier Lagoon area, but it's a little bit ambitious for a one day trip. Well, it, it could be done technically. We've arrived at Skogafoss. Uh, I knew it was a bit of a risk coming over here because I didn't think that the sun was going to be on it. And had we been here 20 minutes ago, I feel like the sun would have been perfectly on the top of the waterfall. Unfortunately now, it's still very beautiful, but it's not that like the most ideal shot. So I think I'm gonna grab a few frames here and I'm gonna head back to the waterfall. It's about a half hour down the road. Uh, grab some photos there because Golden Hour is looking pretty nice right now. With me here, I have the Nikon Z6 with a 24 to 70 uh, f4 kit lens, I guess. It's a very, very overpowered kit lens with a BW 10 stop ND. Everyone's kind of up at the main waterfall, but I'm kind of like in the scene from way back here on the road. So I'm going to do a few photos from back here and then head to that waterfall. And it looks like it might have got a little bit cloudy, so we might have missed our opportunity. Uh, but who knows? All right, so the idea with this shot. It's getting that waterfall way out there in the background, Skoga Foss. Zoomed into 70 and uh, let's try it on. I think this one is the shot, 10 stop ND on this kit lens. Zoomed into 70 uh, with stabilization off. That's a mistake I've made in the past, specifically with Northern Lights, is that if you don't turn the in body uh, or lens stabilization off, uh, you just get some like, some weird, some weirdness to the image that shouldn't exist. And uh, we're counting this down. So this is a very wavy area. So I thought I'd go with a 30 second exposure to smooth it out a little bit. Uh, the waterfall itself is totally fine at like 10 seconds, but just this water down here, let's see what that looks like. Now we're gonna head back an hour closer to town uh, to a waterfall that you definitely recognize from the internet. And it is very much the perfect day. And I'm so happy that I was out here for this exact moment in time. When everything comes together like this, it's truly amazing. It feels like you're gambling and you've just won. Because the weather could be anything here and the weather is perfect today. And I'm gonna put five seconds off timer. We're gonna see what it looks like. All right, this is pretty nice from down here, but I think we're gonna have to go up and do a little bit of the splash zone and get as high as we can because I only have a 24 millimeter lens. Everything's a little bit wet over here. Here we are. What a sight. There's actually no wind right here. It's incredible. The hardest part, or I guess the two hardest parts about photographing this waterfall is one, getting a perfect weather day, and then two, getting a day where you're not just constantly being just rained upon from the waterfall, uh, and there's no wind today, so everything worked out exactly perfectly right somehow. few last uh, handheld shots here. Maybe do a little panorama and then uh, then head out. What a great day. Oh, did I mention that there's a lot of photographers around? There's a lot of tripods. I wish I would have brought a wider lens as well. If I could have had like a 10 mil lens, I could have really got an incredible shot rather than stitching panoramas together. But I cannot complain at all about the results. Last stop here on the photo tour. Permit needed for photography. Last stop here in Iceland. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to be photographing this perfectly calm blue water. I've never seen it this calm before. There's also a few more shots up there. Um, nothing, just gonna be handheld and, and take some photos. 
The water is so calm that you don't even need a neutral density filter. This is, this is perfect. It's funny that there's just like the road right here and then some of the nicest photos you can ever take just right off the side of the road. You might even get the Leica Q2. I feel like this is a 28 millimeter, 48 megapixel scene. Yeah, let's do that. Let me get that, that Leica out and close off today's episode of the Leica Q2 with an image that is probably too many megapixels, but whatever. See you next time. See you in London. 18 hours in Iceland and very happy with the images that I got. I was able to get some waterfalls as well as some blue water. And the only thing I'm missing is a, a, a great photo of a hot dog. I'll get that next time though.